thank you for watching and listening i just want to share uh, about the experience i had uh, at block 437 and this has something to do with gene astro projection and uh, dark occultism so recently i found out uh, from the medium that uh, the skills the things that these cult members and the stepmother know how to do uh, they have been taught by their own families they've been practicing it for many generations so they are able to astro project because we are all just humans we are all souls in human bodies so they have been taught how to astro project to either harass people and things like that they are able to harass and uh, shape shift so all majority of the experiences we had uh, things that we encounter in the homes uh, are related to the cult they are the cult members themselves who are able to astro project into the house and shape shift uh, including the stepmother herself uh, don't ask me how they do it. It's a skill that they taught of one or another. It's very dark satanic rituals that they practice. And then, it, I mean, you think about it. You, when people talk about the, uh, meeting jinn and things like that, they sometimes like to take after the, the features of the person who uh, practice the skills or they take up after... Your family members, for example, you're in a house and then you saw your mother, but that's not your mother is outside, your mother is out shopping, but you saw your mother in the house. Things like that, because the gene is just an entity that is able to shape shift into people that you know. And that's the reason why you're supposed to pray a lot and cleanse the energy of yourself and your home. Because if your house is low vibrational, they are able to open the portals and all these uh, low vibrational people who practice such things are able to send things to your house and also they themselves are able to astro project. So I was told that every single one of the cult members know how to do it because they've been taught from a very young age. So back to the incident at Block 437, uh, it, was, it was in the afternoon, we were getting ready to go out to break fast i think during i think from where we went to we were going to gelang or something like that so i was waiting at the living room and uh, the rest were just minding their own business we were waiting for the stepmother she was like getting ready she's uh, she was the last to get ready and then she was always like nagging and throwing tantrum which in hindsight her behavior was very uh yeah, very narcissistic behavior, you know. Everything has to be about her. So anyway, the layout of the house is such that uh, there are three bedrooms and the room, two rooms are on one side and one room is on the opposite side. So room one and room two is beside one another and room three is opposite room one. There are no connecting doors. There's solid wall between room 1 and room 2. So in order for you to um, enter the room, it's the same way. The, in order for you to leave a room, it's the same way you enter. One way in, one way out, right? So the stepmother was getting ready in the master bedroom. Next thing I know, she crossed to, she go over to room 3 and then she exit from room 1. And... She and then it became where she went back to the master bedroom and then she came out from the room across and she went into room one back and came out from room three, actually room two. So this, this, it doesn't make sense how she was able to go in and out the rooms that have no connecting doors. I remember it was hap it happens in a in the daytime. So yeah, I was very odd. Oh, what's that? And the whole time we thought, oh, oh it's just it's just Satan. Is the devil? This devil? Oh, the place is haunted. We were we were taught from a young when when we moved there, the place is haunted. That's what we were taught. But the actual reality was that she was a uh, practicing Satanist. So, in a running pattern that I noticed that a lot of the entities that we encounter or the beginning of any paranormal experiences it starts in the bedroom and for block 437 it starts from the master bedroom and then when we move to block 748 it's also from the master bedroom 
and then I realized now, and then when we moved to the rental flat, it's also from the bedroom, and that's because that's where she placed all the talisman, all the occultist stuff that opens the portals, and that's the the incident I remember at Block Four Three Seven up to this day was how are you able to go in and out a room? How are you able to enter one room and exit through another room? That there's no connection, no doors whatsoever. So it was something that I thought was so suspicious. It's very odd. Um, consulted the medium, the most recent one, and I was told that uh, it was a skill that they know how to do. And then the whole time, the entity that we kept seeing, the old lady in the house, or um, and then she brought me to Ishun to meet a healer, and the healer said, oh, there's an old lady in the house that's like uh, attached to you, it follows you from the uh, block 4748, block 748, and then uh, the other healer told us that, uh, the Bangkok healer told us is the, the spirit had taken care of me since I was young. So it, the, the, the things they say doesn't really make sense, but now, now, upon finding out most of the truth, it's because it was the stepmother all along. So she was able to shape shift when she was like so called haunting people to take up the the image of an old lady, for example, things like that. And I remember there were a couple of times we saw just black figures, a tall black figure, things like that. And Malay we call we call it Lembaga. And one of the healers also mentioned that uh, he while we're trying to help us he encountered the same thing. And the, the black figure, that entity that we saw, was actually the stepmother herself. They, they are able to shape shift because your soul don't really have a shape, you know. So it's a skill that they are taught and it was a very, very demonic thing that they do in order to be able to achieve that skill. And I remember I as other psychics before I met the most recent one and she told me that there are portals that opened in that are opened in your home in your bedroom and I was advised to get a crystal or something to close the portal or whatnot and you know I, part of it, the reason is because we are so ignorant we don't hundred percent believe we just try to do what we what we were told and the portal was not close. That's the reason why when I encountered the Pontiana at Jalan Cermat, that Pontiana was able to enter the house. And come to think of it, it and it it comes from the same two corners that other experiences we had also occurred. Because that those are the two corners where the portals were opened and uh, more than likely the talisman or whatever item that she has kept to assist her with all the rituals were there and i'm telling you the, i kept searching and searching um when we moved to the rental flat it's just uh it's just a small house right a two-bedroom house but it, it she was a hoarder so it was difficult to find the items we kept searching and searching and searching couldn't find and it makes sense now even when we were living in block 748 the doors that kept opening and closing, the entity that we saw, that the, the running and everything, the hearing the sound of children uh, playing in the house, running, and uh, mostly comes from the master bedroom because the portal was open there. And come to think of it, when I was, when we were living at Block 437, the the entities that I encountered also mostly from the master bedroom because that's where the portal opens was opened so um, I was only able to find the talisman the, the printed mantras uh, and the pictures and some of the symbolistic items that she used for the rituals but I'm sure there are more in the pictures of her victims and the people that she targeted. But I'm sure there are more that I wasn't able to find. 
as the medium told me there's a jewelry jewelry that has uh, attachment to it so in Malay we call it kadam kodam or kadam so basically they uh, acquired the entity and this entity uh, you know they need a vessel either they possess a human body or they possess a uh, item and this this cult uh, they they prefer jewelry so it, it seems innocuous it seems harmless uh, but I was I was too slow to find or I kept trying to look for it I couldn't and I was told that the uh, I was told by the medium that the stepmother had, I mean, she found out that I was trying to look for it. I was getting suspicious. So before I could find, she took it away and kept it with her. So, you see, you just don't know what people's intentions are like, but they really show you, you know. And I remember... She on several occasions would say, "Anybody support board aku ah, uh, support um, that support board salangan aku semua mati sakit cancer. I can dapat cancer or something like that. So anybody who did me wrong, or who crossed me, will get cancer, will die from cancer, things like that. So that's her cult specialty. They know how to do rituals to cause illnesses." to the specific targets and just just to share a little bit um, when I was very young this is the incident uh, with the lady at block at Muslim Drive her friend that she did a ritual on that passed away from cancer she only always bring me over to that friend's house and reason being because she was using my energy. They are energy vampires. All these cult members, they are energy vampires. They constantly need a supply to cloak the energy. So to confuse people, uh, to manipulate people. And at the same time, psychologically, she seems like a, a mother with a child. So it seems harmless. And I just can't understand how... I mean, I saw that lady and then... When we when we went to her house, her hair was already very short and thinning because she was going through a treatment. I, can you fathom? Can you ever understand how you can watch people suffer like that? And because she's demonic, she's low vibrational, she has no uh, empathy for people. So it goes to show, these people, they don't care. They don't care. They see you struggle. They see you suffering. They just simply don't care. And, and that's the reason why if you have any negative emotions, acknowledge it and release it. Because if you keep it festering, it lowers and lowers your vibration and it is enough for these entities to latch on and then encourage you and guide you down a very dark path. So, regularly cleanse your energy, call back your energy, protect your energy, and do the same thing for your for your for your household. Thank you for watching and listening.